welcome back welcome back good evening good evening how you doing how you doing how you been welcome back welcome back how you doing today is everybody ready i said is everybody ready hello hello can you hear me good evening teacher yes all right good evening good evening welcome welcome are you ready for your english class are you ready for your english class hello hello can you hear me yes teacher all right are you ready for your english class we're ready. Excellent. We're Excellent. Ready. All right. I like that. I like that. All right. For the first activity, we're going to go ahead and do a little review. We're going to review the previous class. Now, for the review of the previous class, we're going to be taking a look at the first activity, which is going to be coming from section number 3.10, negative and tag questions for giving opinions negative and tag questions for giving opinions. Everybody please listen and pay attention. Don't you think learning English is easy? Can everybody hear? Negative and tag questions can everybody for hear? giving opinion. Can everybody yes. hear? Negative yes. Okay. yes, I can. Yeah. Okay. Use negative questions or tough questions to offer an opinion and invite someone to react. Isn't it weird how some people are always on their cell phones? Doesn't it seem like kids spend too much time in front of the TV? Wouldn't it be great if everyone had a cell phone like that? Shouldn't the government limit the number of sites? I get email on my cell phone. That's nice, isn't it? TV makes kids lazy, doesn't it? Use the phrase, don't you think, to form negative or tough questions. Don't you think there are too many websites? It's actually dangerous, don't you think? Negative and tough questions for giving opinions. A tough question is a question added at the end of the sentence. Tough questions are used to make sure there is agreement with one's opinion or to make sure information is correct. That was a great restaurant, wasn't it? The post office is next to the bank, isn't it? The post office isn't next to the bank, is it? The verb in the top question is negative if the first verb in the sentence is affirmative, and affirmative if the first verb is negative. Ta questions have falling intonation when the speaker expects the listeners to agree. They have rising intonation when the speaker wants to express uncertainty. Negative questions are also used to seek agreement with an opinion. Read the following vowels. Agree or disagree with these opinions. Let me have one volunteer. Let me have one volunteer. One volunteer, please. Somebody, one volunteer, Elizabeth, okay. Elizabeth, uh, I want you to select one of these topics and I want you to give me your opinion. Okay. Don't you think a lot of people are being confused by Mr. Misinformation on the internet. Excellent, excellent. What is your opinion? Do you agree or disagree? I Why? agree. I agree. We say, yes. I agree. Yes, because you say, I agree. You don't use am. I say I agree or I don't agree, but it's not necessary am. 
Okay. Continue. <clears throat> because in internet, eh, everybody into many information and no, yeah. it, no, it's true all the information. That's and right. the people uh, take uh, is affirmative. Yeah, and they believe it. Mm -hmm. They believe, it, yes. Excellent. And, okay. Thank you. All right. Good job, Elizabeth. Thank you. Uh, does anybody else want to give me their opinion? Another volunteer? Saul. Yes. Select one topic, Saul. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I'm going to choose one topic. Mm -hmm. In this case, I'm going to choose the first one. Okay. Millions of people are addicted to the internet these days. It's kind of strange, isn't it? Well, I think that it is very normal in this day to use a lot of technology, right? Because, well, we can see right now we use technology, but the problem is that sometimes we spend time in things that um, don't don't help us to develop our skill, right? We can mm -hmm. do the mm -hmm. thing more easily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, people don't want to think anymore. For example, calculators. I remember in my time, we had to memorize the multiplication. Nowadays, you don't need to because you have a calculator. I completely agree. Thank you, Saul. Yes, so Our right now, many people use, for example, chat GPT. I don't know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead. Uh, at this moment, does anybody have any questions about this exercise? Questions about this exercise? Anybody? Somebody? No question. Okay. So what I want us to do next is we're going to go ahead and take a look at the following activity. For the following activity, we're going to be doing a listening exercise. Listening exercise, 3.11 listening exercise. Instructions, listen to the news report on technology. What is the report about? Please listen. Listen to a news report on technology. Can what is the hear? report about? Can everybody Check hear? the correct answer. Okay. Yes, teacher. Sports and weather are coming up. But first, here's Health Watch with our medical specialist, Dr. Linda Byrne. Dr. Byrne, there's no question that technological advances in the last decade or two have made our lives easier. But all this technology has its downsides as well, doesn't it? That's right, Peter especially for those suffering from syndromes caused by the stress of our high-tech lifestyles. And this is a relatively recent development, isn't it? Definitely. Such syndromes were nearly unheard of in 1980, before the growth of the Internet and the high-tech industry. Since 1990, however, nearly 300 cases of technology-related stress syndrome were identified. There was a slight drop-off after 1990, but soon the number of cases jumped to three times 1990's rate, which is where it stands today. Could you give us some examples? Well, one of these syndromes is eye strain, in which the eyes become red, watery, and itchy. Eye strain is caused by long hours in front of the computer and compounded by long nights playing video games or watching TV without getting much sleep. One treatment that's recommended is to get away for several days and just look at some beautiful natural scenery with no computers. The second is the well-known carpal tunnel syndrome, a very painful condition of the hands and arms caused by the overuse of keyboards and mice. A trained physical therapist can help with a regimen of stretching and strengthening exercises that have brought good results in many cases. So the syndromes are usually physical? There can also be psychological problems. Take, for instance, a third syndrome we informally call gadget addiction. 
It applies to people who use electronics all day long, nonstop. These people have a deep sense of loneliness whenever they hang up their cell phone or log off the internet. One suggested treatment is to learn to disconnect from the wired world. Leave technology behind for a few hours. Take up a creative hobby or go for a bike ride with friends. Just be sure to leave all the gadgets alone. Thanks, Dr. Byrne. And for more information, go to our website and click on our Health Watch link. And then turn off the computer. Okay, who would like to give me the answer to number one? One letter, volunteer. Letter B, teacher. New health problem caused by technology. Perfect. New health problems caused by technology. Excellent. Let me have part two. Listen, please. Part two. Listen, please. Can everybody hear? Can everybody hear? Can everybody Sports hear? Sports and weather yes, are teacher. coming up. But first, here's Health Watch with our medical specialist, Dr. Linda Byrne. Dr. Byrne, there's no question that technological advances in the last decade or two have made our lives easier. But all this technology has its downsides as well, doesn't it? That's right, Peter. Especially for those suffering from syndromes caused by the stress of our high-tech lifestyles. And this is a relatively recent development, isn't it? Definitely. Such syndromes were nearly unheard of in 1980, before the growth of the Internet and the high-tech industry. Since 1990, however, nearly 300 cases of technology-related stress syndrome were identified. There was a slight drop-off after 1990, but soon the number of cases jumped to three times 1990's rate, which is where it stands today. Could you give us some examples? Well, one of these syndromes is eye strain, in which the eyes become red, watery, and itchy. Eye strain is caused by long hours in front of the computer and compounded by long nights playing video games or watching TV without getting much sleep. One treatment that's recommended is to get away for several days and just look at some beautiful natural scenery with no computers. The second is the well-known carpal tunnel syndrome, a very painful condition of the hands and arms caused by the overuse of keyboards and mice. A trained physical therapist can help with a regimen of stretching and strengthening exercises that have brought good results in many cases. So the syndromes are usually physical? There can also be psychological problems. Take, for instance, a third syndrome we informally call gadget addiction. It applies to people who use electronics all day long, nonstop. These people have a deep sense of loneliness whenever they hang up their cell phone or log off the Internet. One suggested treatment is to learn to disconnect from the wired world. Leave technology behind for a few hours. Take up a creative hobby or go for a bike ride with friends. Just be sure to leave all the gadgets alone. Thanks, Dr. Byrne. And for more information, go to our website and click on our Health Watch link. And then turn off the computer. Okay, who can give me the answer for the first one? Problem number one. Problem number Eye one. Strain. Who can, I'm sorry? I strain. I strain. Excellent. Thank you. Problem number two. Somebody else? Problem number two. Somebody else? Carpal tunnel syndrome. Very good. Carpal tunnel syndrome is correct. Very good. Number three. Problem number three. Another volunteer. Problem number three. Another volunteer. Gadget addiction. Very good. Gadget addiction. Very good. Gadget addiction is correct. All right. Let's look at part three. 
instructions. Listen again. And now choose the right symptoms for each problem. Listen, please. Listen, please. Can everybody hear? Can everybody hear? Sports and weather hear? are coming up. Can but first, hear? here's Health Watch okay. with our medical oh, specialist, yes, Dr. Okay. Linda Byrne. Dr. Byrne, there's no question that technological advances in the last decade or two have made our lives easier. But all this technology has its downsides as well, doesn't it? That's right, Peter. Especially for those suffering from syndromes caused by the stress of our high-tech lifestyles. And this is a relatively recent development, isn't it? Definitely. Such syndromes were nearly unheard of in 1980, before the growth of the Internet and the high-tech industry. Since 1990, however, nearly 300 cases of technology-related stress syndrome were identified. There was a slight drop-off after 1990, but soon the number of cases jumped to three times 1990's rate, which is where it stands today. Could you give us some examples? Well, one of these syndromes is eye strain, in which the eyes become red, watery, and itchy. Eye strain is caused by long hours in front of the computer and compounded by long nights playing video games or watching TV without getting much sleep. One treatment that's recommended is to get away for several days and just look at some beautiful natural scenery with no computers. The second is the well-known carpal tunnel syndrome, a very painful condition of the hands and arms caused by the overuse of keyboards and mice. A trained physical therapist can help with a regimen of stretching and strengthening exercises that have brought good results in many cases. So the syndromes are usually physical? There can also be psychological problems. Take, for instance, a third syndrome we informally call gadget addiction. It applies to people who use electronics all day long, nonstop. These people have a sense of loneliness whenever they hang up their cell phone or log off the internet. One suggested treatment is to learn to disconnect from the wired world. Leave technology behind for a few hours. Take up a creative hobby or go for a bike ride with friends. Just be sure to leave all the gadgets alone. Thanks, Dr. And for more information, go to our website and click on our Health Watch link. And then turn off the computer. All right, all right. Let's check out the first one. Symptoms for eye strain. Symptoms for eye strain. One volunteer. Eyes, Eyes become, become red, red, watery, itchy. Eyes become red, watery, and itchy. All right, number five. Symptoms for carpal tunnel syndrome. Pain in the hands and arms. Pain in the hands and arms. Excellent. Number six, symptoms for gadget addiction. Using gadgets all day long, a deep sense of loneliness. A deep sense of loneliness. All day long. Yeah, that's why a lot of people have like depression and a lot of people, they, uh, they suicide, they kill themselves because they are depressed. And that's the, because of too much technology. All right, let's go ahead and move forward. We're gonna be looking at the next one, which is section 4.0. Uh, by the end of this lesson, participants will practice using reduced relative clauses. Reduced relative clauses, pronouns. Reduced relative clauses. Listen, please. Hello, do you remember about relative pronouns? Who, which, can you hear? Can Good everybody you, hear? You still remember. Now we'll learn how yes, to yes, yes. Can everybody hear? Okay. Yes. okay. Reduce relative clauses. You can shorten a relative clause by dropping the relative pronoun and the verb be someone, who, 
that is, able to think quickly, might be a good surgeon. A person who, that is, looking for adventure could be a private detective. A person who, that is, training music might be a good DJ. You can also drop who or that and change the verb to the gerund. Someone who or that needs job security might not want to be a jazz musician. Someone needing job security might not want to be a jazz musician. In many relative clauses, who or that has can be replaced by with. A person who or that has a good voice could be a good TV journalist. A person with a good voice could be a good TV journalist. Once a relative clause is reduced, it becomes an adjective phrase. It is bound within a noun phrase and defines and describes that noun phrase. A person, noun phrase, working as a surgeon, adjective phrase, needs to be creative and smart. These adjective phrases must come immediately after the noun they are describing. They are not separated by commas. Complete these sentences using your own ideas. Share them in class and with us. All right, let's look at the first example. If I say to you, a person who works as an interpreter how can I complete the sentence? A person who works as an interpreter. What can I say? Is bilingual. What else can I say? A person who works as an interpreter is, what can I say? intelligent, a person who works as an interpreter, what else can I say? Earns a lot of money because it's good salary. What's another example? Speaks friendly. Speaks fluently. Very good. Another example, a person who works as an interpreter. Another example, uh, is well paid. Okay, is well paid, very good. Another example, a person who works as an interpreter. Another example has communication skills has communication skills good job all right so those are just a, a couple of examples now what i would like for you to do is i would like for you to complete both sentences and i want you to write your examples on the discussion box you're going to go to añade una publicación you're going to go where it says titulo, reduced relative clauses. You're going to put it where it says titulo, reduced relative clauses. And here I want you to give me one, two, three examples. And then you're going to click enviar. Any questions? Any questions? No teacher. Okay. You will have five minutes and then we will hear your examples. Ready? Let's go.
And you? Hey, I feel good. I'm waiting for the Cadena Nacional. Okay. Uh, do you have a do you have a question? Hey, did you say I cadena nacional hoy? Yes, yes sure. teacher. Why? I uh, don't know. Ah, Miss Universo. No, it's about the I don't know how to say biblioteca. Biblioteca de San Salvador. Yes, of sure. Ah, mm -hmm. okay. Nice, cool. As an interpreter, for example, has a good job. Yes. The, the first question uh, is traveling all the world, or he uh, knows many people on the world. Okay. <coughs> ¿Quién falta para hacer los tres? A person who works a uh, interpreter is very interesting. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. okay. And the second question. For example, in the second, people who are good with their hands can do interesting things. Okay. For me, oh, okay. Excuse okay. me. Uh, the people who are good with, with their hand is very creative. Yes. And um, people who are good with their hands is an artist or a good musician. Okay. Good carry, perdón, excuse me. A good a good musician. Ah, okay, okay. Uh -huh. Another idea? <laughs> it's very helpful. Uh, people who are good with their hands <clears throat> is good. Uh, Basket game, nerd. Basket game. Mm -hmm. And another 
Hello. Hello. Dani and Tessie, repeat again the number two. Okay. All right, all right. Welcome back, guys. Let me have one volunteer. One volunteer, please. Let me have. Let me have one volunteer. One by Elizabeth, go ahead, Elizabeth. Give me one of your exercises, please. Okay. For example, the number one uh, question uh, has a good job. Mm -hmm. And the number two is a good musician or is excellent basket gamer. Okay, it's an excellent basket basketball player. Basketball player. Basketball player. Uh -huh. Okay, all right. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one, which is 4.2 knowledge check. Rewrite the sentences with reduced relative clauses. Remember to use capital letters and periods. All right, I would like for you to complete this exercise in pairs, and then we are going to check it together as a class. We're going to change groups. Let's go. Okay, I I try Christina. Um, um yesterday I worked worked in the platform. I try um Can you see that? Can you see the platform? Yeah. 
Yes, I can see. Okay. <laughs> I have I have many many M squared. Um, <laughs> um I think number one is someone hoping to be. Mm -hmm. Can you repeat, please, Christina? Okay, someone hoping. Uh -huh. I hope. Voy a tratar de escribir. Okay. El bird to be. Creo que así era, ¿eh? como lo escribí ahí en el en el chat. Okay, I'm trying, trying, trying. Okay, I try. Okay. <clears throat> no. Okay. La número uno. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. I can see the the answer. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. Number three, a person, let me check. A person working as a, a person working. Mm -hmm. Ajá, y ahí la completa. A person working as a community is always looking for you. Okay. Okay. Es que en, en, en algunas palabras me he equivocado. Uh -huh. Yo no, no pude. Confiemos que. Pero me enviaré esta. Antes de que nos saquen. Ah, no, la última no, no. Si no. Está mala. Es el no. R, no, no va. ¿Cómo no? Ah, no, es cierto. Uh -huh. es probable. Clevering. Pues esperemos que así sea. No. Okay. Siempre está mal, bueno. Esa que no de copia el teacher. Sí, ojalá que la, la ponga ahí. 
Ok, Elisa, nos vemos en, el, en la clase principal. Sí, somos <risa> Bye. All right, all right. Who can give me the first one? Who can give me the first one? One example. One example, the first one. Someone who hopes to be a chef. Me teacher. Yes. Someone hoping to be a chef should get the proper training. Very good. Should get the proper training. Number two. Number two. Anyone wanting? To be an actor needs both talent and look. Talent and looks, very good. Number four, luck, Dream. luck, talent and, talent and luck. Number three, uh -huh. number three. A person working as a comedian is always looking for new ways to make people laugh. To make people laugh. Excellent. Good job. Number four. Number four. Amy, hey, teacher. Yes. People clever enough. To, to get. get inside the mind of criminal would make good detective. Would make good detectives. Good. Excellent. Number five. Number five. Somebody. Me, teacher. Go ahead. Okay. Anyone dreaming of becoming a champion athlete has to be prepared to do a lot of, of hard work. Very good. Champion. Excellent. Number six. Number six. I don't know, but uh, I have a mistake in that answer. What is the mistake? I don't know. And I think that I wrote okay, but I don't know what happened. 
Okay, let me go ahead and share it with you on the WhatsApp as a text message. Give me one second. I wrote that in the chat. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know what is, I'm, what is my mistake. Let me go ahead and share it with you because uh, sometimes I don't know if it's the capitalization or what, I don't know what it is, but it's number six, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. That is eight. Did you get it? Someone responsible for a large staff has to be able to be creative with scheduling. Did you get it? I'll put it here. Oh yeah, I see that Saul passed it on, thank you. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the next one, which is 4.3. In this class, participants will discuss personal creativity and practice the lesson vocabulary. Creativity quiz. Listen, please. Creativity. Thank you. Take the following quiz hear? and find out. Can everybody hear? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Add up your score, then find out what it means. Do you agree? Tell your partner. Well, how creative are you? Take the following quiz and find out. Okay, so for this activity, I want you to take the quiz. Add up your score, then find out what it means. And find out agree? what is Tell your your, your personality. This is the quiz. You're going to answer the questions. Add up your score, and then you're going to say, what is your personality? Any questions? Any questions? Okay, let's do it. Personality quiz. Um, the answers are always, sometimes, rarely, never. Um, sometimes, rarely. Uh, my number words are you a risk taker sandra uh, sometimes sometimes okay and you mm -hmm. uh, rarely <laughs> okay <laughs> and ceci Sometimes. 
Uh, are you naturally curious? Always. And you? Um. Yes. Always. And Ceci? Sometimes. And number three, do you look for opportunities to improve things? Always. <laughs> Had you? Um, sometime, sometime. And Ceci? Always. Okay, um, are you sensitive to beauty? Sometimes. And you, Elmer? Mm. Sometime, sometime. <laughs> okay. And Ceci? What about you, Ceci? Same. Oh, sometime. Sometime. Okay. Uh, number five. Do you change accepted ideas? Sandra? Um, sometime. And mm, you? For me, sometime. Sometime mm -hmm. too. And Ceci? Me too. Sometime. Okay. Um, oh, I have a new, a new uh, partn partner, uh, Arsenio. Hello, good evening. Hi, Arsenio. Sometime, me too. Okay, excellent. Uh, number six, do you keep an eye out the new fashions and um, products and um, products? Always. Mm, yes, always for me. And Ceci and Arsenio? Me too, always. Never. Never. Okay. Uh, number seven. Do you adapt easily to new situations? Always. Mm. How about you? <laughs> um, sometime, sometime. Mm -hmm. And Sometimes. Ceci? Sometimes. And, Ar and Arsenio? Probably. Excuse me, Arsenio? Rarely, rarely, no sé cómo se pronuncia. Rarely. Ok, Arsenio. Um, number eight. Do you trust your west in intuition and, and la última palabra, no sé cómo se pronuncia. Sandra. ¿Sabe usted cómo se pronuncia la número 8, la última palabra? Eh, Cree que la puede deletrear porque estoy desde el celular y casi no oh, se ve okay, bien. Ok, 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 ok. Es I am is I G H T S. Inside us. Mm. Maybe. <laughs> 
I don't know. <laughs> okay. Pero como que si usted puede seguir sus instintos, algo no. así. O sus intuiciones. Que si usted cree, ajá, que si usted cree en sus, en las intuiciones. Ajá, algo así. Predicciones algo así en sus creencias. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, sometimes. All right, let me have two volunteers, two volunteers, one read the question and the other one read the, give me the answer. Who wants to volunteer? Sergio, Erica, Daisy, can you hear me? Tamaris, Elizabeth, can you hear me? Yes. Excellent, excellent. All right, so Elizabeth, I would like for you to uh, ask the question and Elmer, I want you to respond to the question. The number one, Elmer. Yes, yes, please. Are you risk late? Are you risk taker? Um, Sometime. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, I want you to ask the 10 questions, one through 10. Are you naturally curious? Uh, yes, always. Oh, good. Do you look for opportunities to improve things? Mm, yes, always. Always. Very always. good. Thank you, Elmer. Uh, those are the 10 questions. Okay. Do you look to improve opportunities to improve? Uh, the next question, are you sensitive to beauty? Yeah, I want you to ask the 10 questions. One through 10. Uh, oh. You were on question number four. You are now going to do question number five. Me? And me? Okay. Are you sensitive? Are you sensitive to beauty? Um, Sometimes. Okay. Do you challenge accept ideas? Mm, Sometimes. Do you keep an eye an eye out for new fashions and products? Mm, Sometimes. Tell true, please. Tell true. <laughs> <laughs> Be honest. <laughs> be, honest be honest, yes. <laughs> okay. Do you adapt um, easily to new situations? Okay, guys, time is up. Time yes, is always. Up. I, I thank you, Elmer. Thank you, Elizabeth. I know that everybody wants to participate, but we got to go. All right. Thank you, guys. See you tomorrow. Have a good night. Good night.